one particular incident has been given the most attention in the Quran and that is the interaction between Musa and Fir'aun. The interaction between Musa and Fir'aun. It is one of the most common themes of all of the stories of the Quran. And it is true to say, no other story has been mentioned more and with different understandings and different details than the story of Musa and Fir'aun. Why is that the case? What is the reason for this? The reason is that the story of Musa, and in particular Musa and Fir'aun, is a story that has so much parallels and wisdom and similarities in every single generation. So many times in the seerah, our own Prophet Muhammad وسلم, would invoke the memory of Musa. He would remember the struggles of Musa. Once he even said, may Allah have mercy on Musa, he was tested more than me and he showed patience. Even our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he took Musa السلام, as a role model to take lessons from. So therefore it behooves us as Muslims, when we study the Quran, we study the seerah, that we too pay attention to the story of Musa and Fir'aun. And in particular for today's khutbah, what I want to illustrate is how ironic the reality, what reality am I talking about? How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Fir'aun and describes Musa. The irony of ironies, in today's time, those who pretend to follow Musa, or some amongst them, are in reality following Fir'aunic tactics and abandoning Musa. Now some will say, how dare you say this? So I say, wait, listen. Listen to what the Quran says about Musa السلام, and Fir'aun. Look at the adjectives that Allah used for Fir'aun. And then ask yourself, which nation on earth, which country on earth, which group of people on earth is employing the exact same tactics and the exact same adjectives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Fir'aun ala fil ardi. Fir'aun became tyrannical in his land. Fir'aun became tyrannical. He thought himself mighty. He thought he has to answer to no one. And Allah Azza wa Jal said, He divided his own people up based upon their race, based upon their skin color. He divided his own people. They're supposed to be one land, one country. What did Fir'aun do? He divided. And what did he do? One group amongst them, he subjugated. One group, he took as second, third, fourth class citizens. And another group, he said, are my chosen people. Not only did he divide, not only did he subjugate, then he began mass massacres. He began to slaughter their innocent children. He began to kill innocent people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes Fir'aun in the Quran, He was of those who wreaked havoc in the world. He was of those who created evil in the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other verses Describe Fir'aun, he was of the criminals on earth. Allah calls Fir'aun the biggest criminal to ever walk the face of this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Fir'aun transgressed. Go to Fir'aun, O Moses, because he has transgressed beyond all reasonable bounds. He has done things that nobody should do. And that is why when Musa السلام, came to him, look at what Fir'aun said. Look at the tactics of Fir'aun. When Musa said, my Lord has sent me to you to free my people, let them worship in peace. My God has sent me to you to stop subjugating innocent people, to stop killing innocent people, to let the children of Israel go and worship God in peace. Fir'aun did not listen to this simple plea of humanity. And Fir'aun, according to the Quran, says, if you dare, if you dare continue in this message, I am going to throw you in jail or kill you. This is the reality of tyrannical regimes. When they cannot answer with solid arguments, they resort to violence, they resort to annihilation, they resort to jailing. If you dare go against me, the Asjunanda, I'm going to throw you in jail. And when Musa comes with the ayat of Allah, with the miracles of Allah, Fir'aun employs
employs another tactic, smear campaign, propaganda, outright lies, blatant lies. Fir'aun says, in Hadani Nasahirani, these are evil magicians, even though he and his group were the magicians, he was the magician, and he accused Musa of being the magician. The same crime you are guilty of, when you accuse your opponent of, you are following the tactics of Fir'aun. This is Fir'aunic tactics. What did Fir'aun do? What was the tactic of Fir'aun? When Musa comes and says, free my people, let them worship in peace, Fir'aun says, to Musa, how dare you come back to me when I was the one who took care of you. I was the one who raised you in my palace. And then you went and you killed the Qibli. You all remember Musa accidentally punched somebody and he killed them. So Fir'aun mentions a crime or a mistake of Musa. And Musa says, You're right, I made a mistake and I was mistaken. Ms. Musa admits, I made a mistake, I shouldn't have done that. But then he says, hold on a sec, who exactly are you to remind me of this small favor upon me when you have subjugated the entirety of the children of Israel? Look at your hypocrisy, O Pharaoh. How dare you mention this small privilege you gave unto me? In the meantime, what are you doing? My entire people have been subjugated. My entire people have been destroyed. My entire people are on the brink of annihilation. And you dare mention my one mistake that I did? What gives you the right to ignore your own crimes? And you point out my one mistake. And we can go on and on about so many other tactics of Fir'aun against Musa. But the reality and the reason for this khutbah is SubhanAllah, sisters and brothers, the irony of ironies in our times, a group of people, not all of them, and we must mention boldly, and we must praise those amongst the, the people of Israel, the children of Israel, the, 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 the Bani Israel, who stand out against their other, uh, uh, their other people, the Zionist movement. There are many members of the Orthodox, there are mem many rabbis, there are many people like Jewish Voices for Peace who are standing and calling out Zionism for what it is. Many Orthodox rabbis have said, Zionism is Pharaonic, and I am saying the same thing. Zionism is not following the children of Israel. It's not following Moses. It is following Pharaoh. Don't believe me. Go look at the tactics. Go look at exactly how Allah describes Pharaoh, one after the other, killing people, subjugating people, dividing people, false prophets, Propaganda, pointing out the mistakes of the other while you ignore your own mistakes, making sure nobody preaches the truth, trying to annihilate those who preach the truth, subjugating those who preach the truth, making anybody who preaches the truth into jail. That's exactly what Pharaoh says, exactly what Fir'aun says. If you dare preach this, I'm going to throw you in jail. And now, if you're a reporter in Gaza, you will be assassinated. You will go to jail. If you pe pe preach the truth, speak the truth, you're going to be blacklisted. If you dare speak truth to power, immense propaganda begins against you. All of these tactics are 100% Fir'aunic and nothing to do with Musa alayhi salam. And that is why, brothers and sisters, that is why we are the real followers of Musa. We are the real followers of Musa. This is not me saying, this is our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, hadith is Sahih Bukhari, nahnu ahabku bi Musa minkum. He said this 1,400 years ago, and we say it to this day. Listen loudly and clearly, O oh, you who pretend to follow Moses, we ask you to actually follow Moses. And if you don't follow Moses, and you follow the Pharaoh, we say to you exactly what our Prophet said to us, we have more right to follow Moses than you. We have more right to ascribe ourselves to Moses than you. We are the real children of Moses salam, and not you, because you have a Mosaic law, you have abandoned Mosaic mercy, you have abandoned the worship of your God.
We must stand up, preach the truth, try our best to influence the people. This is the least that is required of us. Dear Muslims, the path ahead of us is long. The battle might not be over in a day or two. Last time, we lost Aqsa. We didn't have it for almost a century. 100 years the crusaders had Aqsa. Eventually, we got it back. During the interim, the Muslims did not lose hope. During the interim, they continued to remind the spirit. We are now in that interim. We have certainty that this is temporary. We have certainty that Palestine will be free. Not because I said so, because Allah has promised in the Quran. If 
he cannot do so, if the circumstances don't allow him to correct with force, then let him do so with his tongue. And he cannot even do that, if the persecution is so severe, he cannot even do that, then at least hate it in your heart, and that is the weakest level of Iman. O Muslims, we live in a land where our constitutional freedoms have guaranteed us the right to do protests with our tongue. This is our right and our privilege. It is something that is enshrined in the very founding documents of this country. Nobody can go to jail for protesting legally and peacefully. Nobody can go to jail or be persecuted for speaking out to politicians and disagreeing with policies. And the fact of the matter, the way this country is founded, every one of us has a part to play. Our government is supposed to be represented of us. Our politicians work for us. So if we will not stand up to influence our politicians, if we will not stand up and protest, then do we blame them for doing what they want to do? It's their country. No, it's our country. How can our country be getting away with this? We have to stand up and protest. We have to start influencing. Do not lose hope. This is a battle that is long term. You might not win in a day. You might not win in a year. But the tide is shifting. Gallup survey did a poll. Those below the age of 35. Those below the age of 35. More amongst them support the Palestinian cause than the Israeli cause. Those above the age of 35. Majority of them are pro-Israeli and anti-Palestinian. This is a clear demographic shift. We see that the tide is changing. Do not lose hope. Do not waver. Do not give up. We're in this for the long run. It is our country that allows that apartheid regime to get away with what it is doing. We are living in this country. I know some of us feel a level of cognitive dissonance. I know some of us feel ethically and morally this is wrong. And I say to you, it is wrong what our country is doing. Use that anger. Feel angry. That anger is Islamic. Feel a sense of shame. That shame is Islamic. Then be motivated to do something. Be motivated to first and foremost be better in your own minds. And I say this bluntly and unequivocally. The number one condition for Allah to help us is not our tactics. It is our iman. First and foremost, strengthen your own iman. Be a more pious person. Embody the teachings of Islam in your personal life. Show your friends, your colleagues, your neighbors what it means to be a Muslim. Be a role model Muslim. Be an ambassador for our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Make sure you understand what you can do, what is legal to do. I am not asking you to go to jail. I'm not asking you to do something illegal. But protesting, influencing, lobbying, raising public awareness, this is the reality 
with the religious and with the book. This religion shall be victorious over all others, even if others hate it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's victory is promised. So sisters and brothers, you do your job. You put in the effort as much as you can. You be the best you can be. And if you do so, even if you don't see the victory in your life, you have been personally victorious. And you have attained Jannah. And you shall be saved. And the people will continue the message after you. Allah does not ask us for results. Allah asks us for efforts. You put in the effort and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of us. Allahumma inni da'i fa'minu. Allahumma inni da'i fa'minu.
Yeah. Uh-huh. 